Recording. Zora. Why isn't switching to me? There we go. Live from Brooklyn. It's Monday night. And I'd love to introduce the crew to you. First, come on, let's switch. First, we have. I don't understand why this isn't switching. It's up in your chat. Ring in. Are we froze up? Here we go. First, from Columbus, Ohio, we have Mr. Donald Culp. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Doesn't switch real fast. I think you have to say something to make it switch. John, say anything. Okay. Hey, you guys. This and is John. I'm from Nashville. Good evening. And then we have the Lewis family down in La Porta, Texas. Is that how you pronounce it? La Porte, the door. The door to Texas, La Porte. <laughs> La Porte. God bless you guys. Okay, and we have Mike and Dana Lewis. And then, of course, we go back to Brooklyn. where I'm still dodging bullets. And the car horns. Oh. Oh. Um, Don Culp, would you open us up with a word of prayer? Yes. Well, most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time where we can be alive and know your word. We're so blessed to have your word in our midst, to you, uh, be able to read it on a daily basis and allow it to light our path on a daily basis. Thank you for the love that you have for us, that you're with us in every situation, and that we can reign in life even now until the Lord returns. Thank you for all your love and graciousness to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Mr. Michael, would you please bring up the um, blog? Certainly I will. Okay. Thank you much, Lee. Um, before we start, I want to admit, uh, before I even do that, you may remember 
about a year, year and a half ago, I was teaching on the book of Esther. And I promised to go through Esther, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Are you recording, oh, Don? Yeah, I'm, re I'm recording. Let me just be sure. Looks like it. Got a little flashing light in the top left corner. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. Uh, I want to, uh, I told you guys about it when I taught the book of Esther that I would go through all three of the books, Esther, Ezra, and Nehemiah. And you have to, and the books are of the Bible, I want to mention this, are not in order. For instance, Let me see. Ah, there. Okay. For instance, Ezra, Esther, and Nehemiah come before Psalms. Yet David wrote the Psalms hundreds of years before those books were written or took place. Ezra picks up where Chronicles, Second Chronicles, stops. And this is from the commentary in the REV. Now, the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, Ezra 1.1, is almost identical to the last two verses of Second Chronicles. Uh, from chronological point of view, Ezra takes, takes over where Chronicles stops. The first year of Cyrus refers to the first year of his reigning over Babylon, which he conquered in 538 BC. Now, David lived in around 900 BC. So, as you can tell, there, that's a long time before this book. Not the first year of his reigning in Persia, 559 BC. Babylon was captured in October 593 BC. But Cyrus did not get there and start his reign over Babylon until March of 580, 538 BC. Quite a lot is known about Cyrus from the Persian records. Also, Cyrus is, a, is actually is an actual name, not a title. Whereas other parts of Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther names Darius, Xerxes, Atherax and, and all these other names are actually titles and not proper names. Now you may remember that's also the same as Herod. Herod was not a name. Herod was a title. Because it usually was Herod Teriarch or Herod something. And they were the men who, uh, they, Herod was just the title. By the mouth of Jeremiah, Jeremiah had prophesied that the Babylon captivity would be 70 years. And that's in Jeremiah 25, 11 and 12 and 29, 10. So Yahweh worked behind the scenes to make sure that that prophecy came true. Here are those two verses from Chronicles. Uh, verse 30, or chapter 36, verses 22 and 23. In the first year, Cyrus, the king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord had spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord stirred the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, to a second proclamation throughout his kingdom to put in writing as follows. This is what the, Cyrus, the king of Persia, says. The Lord of heaven, who has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, has appointed me to build a house for him at Jerusalem in Judea. Whomever you belong, whoever among you belongs to his people, may the Lord God be with you, and may you go up. So let's get started. Uh, uh, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. Now the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, the word of Yahweh by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. Yahweh stirred the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all of his kingdom and put into writing saying, this is what Cyrus the Persian, 
the Cyrus of Persia says. <laughs> <laughs> Yahweh, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. This was written in Hebrew so that all the Hebrews could read it. This book has Hebrew and Aramaic running all through the book, as does Daniel They were when they were in the captivity of the Babylonia. That, is in, that info is again in, from the Rev. Whenever you read the word house in the, in the Hebrew scriptures especially, it means temple. If, if it says a person house, a certain person's house, like Jeremiah's house or Abraham's tent or whatever, that doesn't apply. But if it's just the house, it's always the temple. And that's why... Um, in Acts 2, when it says the house, it's talking about the temple, not the upper room. Cyrus was the son of Estriages and Esther, which proves Esther happened before Ezra. And in the, if you look at your index in your Bible, Esther comes last, but it's actually the first. This may also add some light as to why he, Cyrus, would let the Jews return to Jerusalem. Verse 3, whoever is among you of all his people, may his God be with, be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judea, and build the house of Yahweh, the house of God, the house of the God of Israel. He is the God who is in, who is in Jerusalem. And remember, Esther was this guy's mother. This could be translated a Persian Jew. You may remember in Acts 2, many were visiting Jerusalem because of the feast. Uh, they were required to be there. These, these people we're talking about are the ancestors of those men and women. In the beginning of verse 3, you have a figure of speech Eretesis, or interrogation, which is asking us a question, not for information, but for an answer. Such a question may be asked in a positive affirmation, in a negative affirmation, in an affirmative negotiation, in a demonstration, in wonder, in admiration, in rapture, in wishes, in refusals, in denials, in doubts, in admonition, in expulsions, in prohibitions, uh, or discussion, in pity and consternation, in dis disapparent, disparate, whatever that word is, in reproaches and in lamentations, in indignations, in, in absurdities and impossibilities, a double question. Okay. The word builds. The word builds means to rebuild. You know, um, he told them they could go to Jerusalem and build the temple. Okay. Down yeah. further. Okay. The word build means to rebuild. When Nebuchadnezzar came and carried off the 10 northern tribes, he burnt and destroyed the temple. And that's in 2 Chronicles 36. <coughs> Let each one who has survived in whatever place he may live be assisted by the men of this place with silver and gold and with go goods and animals besides the free will offering of the house of God which is in Jerusalem. Most of the Jews, though they were told they could go, decided to stay. This was true of Jews all around the Mediterranean. When they had the chance to go back, they decided to stay instead. These are called Hellenistic Jews in the book of Acts. Hellenistic or Hellenistic Christians, actually. 
They were also called this, this, how do you pronounce that word, Mike? Dispora. Dispora. Okay, fine, I get one, one right. <laughs> then the heads and the fathers of the houses of Jude and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, and even all whose spirit God had stirred up to go. Now this is from the Rev Commentary. The reason it's in blue is if you were on my, if you were on the blog like Mike is, you could click on that and you would go to th this commentary in uh, the REV. Don't click it, Mike. <laughs> the heads of the, the heads of the fathers' houses. Excuse me for one second. I got to put a new cough drop in. Ah, there we go. Okay, the heads of the father's houses. The Hebrew text seems to cut off only because everyone at that time would have known what the heads of the fathers meant. You know, that that's like a if I were to say we're going on a coffee break, you would understand it. I wouldn't have to explain it. But if I wrote that down and 200 years from now, somebody looked at it, they might not understand what a coffee break is. They would think we're breaking coffee beans. Um, which was the heads or leaders of the ancestral houses of Is in Israel? Ancestral houses was the most basic organizational unit in ancient Israel. We actually see on the border, this on the border scale in the 12 tribes of Israel. Each tribe, for example, Judah, Benjamin, Dan, Iskar, were, were descendants from the name of that one person the patriarch who himself was a descendant of Israel. That is Jacob as, su as such the 12 tribes of Israel are the 12 tribes descendant, descendant from Jacob. And that family identity, um, where, let's see, I, I lost place. Go back, Mike. I told you not to push the blue stair, blue area. Each tribe, for example, okay, patriarch was descendant as Jacob, such as the 12 tribes. I uh, knew, for example, Paul, who lived over 1500 years after Benjamin, knew that his personal ancestor was Benjamin says so in Philippians 3, 5. By the time, um, where did it go? I lost, by the time the return to Babylon, however, a thousand, there, put that up there and me, I will not keep getting in the way. Edit that, Don. Uh, by the time the return to Babylon, however, was over a thousand years after Jacob lived, there was more than the 12 ancestral houses. And besides, only the tribes of Judah and Benjamin were carried in mass to Babylon. The other tribes had been conquered and scattered uh, by Assyria in 2 Kings 17.5. Each house was more like a clan or a tribe than what today we would think of as a house with an elder and a father figure and grandchildren, great, great, etc. The Bible house, household, <coughs> was an extended group of patriarchs of these houses played a very important role in the government of the people, as we see here in Ezra. 
Um, I don't know what that's to it. I got to get that out of there later. All of those who were who were around them strengthened their hand with vessels of silver, gold, with goods, uh, and with animals and with valuable things besides everything that they that was willingly offered. Also, those who were around them. We learn from history that more of the Judeans who had been carried captive to Babylon, stayed in Babylon, then returned to Judah. The Judeans had lived for some two generations in Babylon and had made it their home, but they helped the Judeans who did not return to Judah by giving them things they needed. Again, from the Rev. In verse 9, this is the number of them, 30 platters of gold, a thousand platters of silver, 29 knives, 30 bottles, bowls of gold, and silver, 410 silver bowls, the second kind, and a thousand other vessels. All these vessels of gold and silver were 5,400 shesbert, whatever that is, bought up all those which had been in exile from Babylon to Jerusalem. This has to be a partial list. This could not be enough to reach that kind of a value. On to chapter 2. I'm not going to attempt to read all of this. If you're watching this, we will scroll slowly, and you can pause it, and I will read some of it. But maybe not all of it. Maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Verse 1, now these are the people of the province who came and up and went out of captivity with those who had been in exile, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away to Babylon and who had returned to Jerusalem and Judea, everyone to his city, who came to, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, he's Heshua, Nehemiah, Surya, um, the number of men of the people of Israel, the sons of uh, this dude, it was 2,172, the sons of Shepheth were 372, the sons of Ahura were 775. This is a lot like Chronicles, it, it reads that way anyway. The sons of Baphoma, the sons of Jeshua and Job, Joab, 2,812. The sons of Eliam, 1,254. The sons of uh, Zatu, 945. The sons of Zekiah, 760. The sons of this other guy, 642, and this other guy, 623. Uh, this other guy, 1,222. This guy had uh, 666. Not a good number. The sons of Bigvia, 2,056. The sons of Aden, 454. This, and on and on. Keep scrolling down, Mike. You can see all of these men. Okay, the Levites. Let's go back to the Levites. The Levites, the son of Jeshua and Kamadin, the sons of Havodia, was 74. Now, we've got to remember that. Um, of all the tribes, probably the smallest one, the smallest one was uh, Benjamin, but the Levites, those were the priests. So, you know, the, if people were staying where they were and not going to Jerusalem, there had to be some Levites stay there to minister to the people because without the Levites can't do sacrifices and the whole suit match. That's why there's so few um, Levites going. 
The singers, the sons of Asfa, 128. Um, the sons of the gatekeepers, uh, 139, down to verse 43. The temple servants, the sons of Zia and this other person and this other person, the 44 sons of Keras and this other person and another person. I'm sorry, people, I have, you can ask these three guys, I have a terrible time with these names. Um, so let's go to verse 47. To the sons of Gideon, the sons of Gera, the sons of Rhea, 48 sons, and him, and then verse 49, some of the sons of, and let's just continue to scroll slowly so that people can see. The sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of, um, okay, go all the way down to verse 58. All the temple servants, sons of Solomon, were 392. These were those who came up from Tel Mila uh, and all those other places. Verse 60, the sons of Delilah, the sons of Toab, the sons of 652. Of the sons of the priest and the sons of Hibite and these other people who took wife and daughters and called them by name, these sought their place among those who were registered by genealogy but were not found. There were they were considered unclean and excluded from the priesthood. The governor said to them um, that they could not eat most of the holy things until the priest stood up in with stood up with Yum and this other guy. The whole assembly together was forty two thousand three hundred and sixty. Beside the male slaves and the female slaves, there were 7,337 and 200 men signing and women. Their horses were 736 and mules were 235 and camels were 430 and donkeys and then gift for the work. Some of the heads and fathers of the household when they came to the house of Yahweh that was in Jerusalem, offered willingly for God to set up, set it up on this site. According to their availability, they gave the ministry treasury 61,000 drachars of gold and all this other stuff. Now the priests and Levites and some of the other people and singers and gatekeepers and temple servants lived in their city in Israel, uh, lived in their cities and all of Israel in their cities. So here what you have is all these people, these 40 plus thousand men and women coming back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And that sets you up for um, some interesting stuff that we're going to get into next week. Okay. Now it doesn't want to switch to me. I'll have to practice with this. Speaker view. Speak, 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 speak. There we go. All right. So. That's pretty much what I wanted to share. Not a lot, just wanted to get it started. And hopefully we won't have too many more chronologies like that. Hopefully we'll get more into um, all the great things that happen. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time that I was able to teach. I thank you, Father, for Don and Mike and John and Dana for just watching over them and blessing them. I thank you for this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. You are going away. We
or or we, depending on how you're viewing this, <laughs> we're staying right here. We'll see you in fellowship after hours. Yes, it's awful weird to try to figure out what you want to point to, because I was trying to point to my front door, and I was. <laughs> yeah, we got we saw how get used to this thing. Mm -hmm. This is only the second time we've used it, and I know there's a way that you can start off with. See, it started recording the second I went to it. Wow. That's yeah. uh, under your uh, vid video where the little arrow is to the right hand side. You click on that arrow and you go to video settings. You have all you have your general, your video, your audio, your virtual background, your recordings, and there you have your recording options as far as how you want to start your recordings. Okay. <laughs> I've got an upwards pointing arrow. Okay, so you see where it says video settings? Uh, I have participating, can share at any time. Multiple participants can share simultaneously in advanced sharing options. Okay, that, that's under your, to the right of your video, your video recorder down on the left hand side. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, long tech, integrated webcam, video settings, okay. Then you click on video settings and you see that big white box comes up with all those sub menus. Yep. That, that's your, that's where you have to set up what you wanted to do. It even has how you wanted to switch screens and what kind of control you want to have and all that stuff. Okay, I'll go over that later. I'm not going to try messing with it now. Yes, sir. All right, so thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Mike's worked with this a little bit more than I have. I probably should have taken more time to work with it. All right, anyone have anything? Anyone want to comment on what we just went through? This yeah. is this is huge, man. I've been studying uh, Daniel's prophecy and the time period from the going forth of the rebuilding of Jerusalem, of the command to rebuild mm -hmm. until Christ would be uh, 77s or 490 years. And I want to try to tie this in on the work that Don and I have done with Jesus Christ, uh, the star, the birth of Jesus Christ. Because there's a real, real uh, cool, I mean, real cool, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, what's his name? It did the work on it. Has Martin. Gotten, huh? Martin. Is it Barton? M A R T I N Martin. That's the one. The the, the work. The, the the time down to uh, exactly what uh, the the all the way to uh, three B C. I mean, it goes. <laughs> I mean, they they really. I can't. I, I'll think of his name, but I really want to tie that in with that teaching next year, maybe with the uh, the daughter and I do because this this lineage here and this rebuilding of this temple. And, and it's so amazing because it's the uh, it's the signal of the coming of the Lord too. I mean, that's why those prophets and everybody were so waiting for Jesus Christ's return during that time. That's why uh, what was the prophet's name? Where when they took him in for a circumcision, the, the prophet and the prophetess was in Jerusalem. That was promised that they would see the day of the Lord. Simeon? Uh, Simeon and Anna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the yep. part of the reasons why they knew that the time was coming was not just the revelation, but the confirmation from the word, from the prophecy, from the book of Daniel concerning the 77s. And this time period here, this rebuilding, uh, uh, marks that. It's really, really, really cool.
Huh. Interesting. The second temple period, yeah. yeah. They were really expecting him to come. I mean... Well, now, uh, that brings up a question I had that uh, it kind of, uh, uh, you know, tweaks it. It makes me remember I had a question when Don was teaching, and it said that uh, Cyrus, uh, Cyrus was going to build the temple. Now, so he was going to rebuild it. So Solomon was before Cyrus, and he had already built the yep. temple. Okay. That's right. It was totally destroyed. Yeah, that's why I made a point of pointing out that um, Cyrus, um, his mother, was Esther from the book of Esther. And, it, you know, all three of these books happen way at, they're they're in 400, you know, like 300 and something BC. That's talking about a thousand years before Psalms and Psalms was written, yet they're still in front of those books. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because and, and Don, maybe you can help with this. And this is part of the stuff I'd like to look into uh, uh, concerning this stuff. Is that, I mean, the 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 second temple didn't actually get completed until the uh, Herod, right? Yeah, Herod finished it. Yeah, huh. so that's how long it took <laughs> to actually get this thing built because of that adversarial opposition that was coming across trying to stop that thing from being built. The devil's always after the word. They knew the Christ was coming, and they were doing everything in their power to stop it, to make God a liar, to not allow his word and the prophecies that came through the prophets to, to, to contend with that to the point to disrupt it to where it wouldn't happen. Can't be God, though. <laughs> He came, he saw, he left, and he is. Mm. Jesus Christ came. Amen. That, that, uh, that, that, I'm, uh, I'm picking up some of Heisner's stuff, and uh, I'm looking at the, the term. We use the term Gentiles all the time when we read Christian writings because that's, frankly, the way it's translated. But it's really, it really a better translation for that word would be nations, because you had you had Israel, the called out of God, and you had all the other nations, and this calling to the nations that God was trying to achieve during this time to make Israel the light, the shining light on the hill, and that all the nations were supposed to be uh, guided toward that light they were supposed to israel was their example of how things could run and if you think about the garden of eden all the way back to the beginning what did god tell adam and eve he said be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it they were supposed to take a lot of people get messed up they think the whole planet was paradise and that's not what the bible teaches the bible Eden was a place on earth. It was the God. It was the where heaven and earth met, just like the temple area was a place on earth where heaven and earth met, where God would come to be with his people, the holy place, the reflection of heaven. Well, Eden was that original spot on earth. Yeah, so, it's called the garden. The garden, exactly. God, that, the garden. It's not the entire planet. It's just the garden. Exactly, but they were they were supposed to subdue the earth. They were supposed to take that idea of paradise and take it across the world, literally. And when that didn't work because they blew it, uh, you had the the uh, incident with the angels coming down and producing the Nephilim, trying to destroy the entire race because of the promise seed, trying to destroy the promise seed. And so God deals with that with the flood. And he sets up Noah, and he and he he tries to get man to govern himself. He, you're gonna, you got. And Noah wasn't a Jew. A lot of people don't realize. <laughs> yeah. Noah was of the, was a person that produced the nations of the world. That's where you have the table of nations that come up out of Noah's lineage, and and that's that's basically showing you how man was. God keep all this stuff keeps coming up. 
and God keeps up with the plan because he's got this idea in mind. And so from, from Abraham and his lineage, you have all the nations of the world. Well, they weren't doing a very good job of governing themselves, so we had the Tower of Babylon, right? <laughs> where, where they started uh, building the great tower because they were going to bring themselves up to gods. They were going to touch the gods. That's the idea of the Tower of Babylon. They were going to be able. They were going to take the, raise their, themselves to their own height. So, God, tur- <laughs> He's done with these nation thing because it ain't working too good. And what He's going to do is going to turn the nations over to angelic beings. The name Elohim is the term, sons of God, and He's going to go after Abraham and bring a nation to Himself to focus on that nation, and then all the sons of God. The, 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 the ones that were put over the other nations was supposed to bring those nations Israel. Well, that didn't work out to, uh, good either. The sons of God rebelled. The angels rebelled. They they <laughs> they were supposed to be doing one thing, and they were doing the exact opposite before it was over with. But, uh, but all this time, God's trying to get to this seed, to this man, to get this thing produced so he can save Humanity. <laughs> That's all he wants to do is provide salvation for humanity and seal up evil, conquer evil, because this evil thing just ain't working out too good for God. <laughs> it's it's just trying to destroy everything, and uh, and 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 everything. The devil's constantly trying to stop that because he knows in that seed it's going to smash his head. It's gonna, it's going to it's going to destroy him. It's going to. And, and the more prophecies that come out about it. So this part here is, once again, God's trying to, he's got a problem. Israel wasn't listening. They got carried away and got taken over because of their disobedience. And now he's trying to put it back together so he can provide what he prophesied would happen to that point. And again, this is progressive progressive revelation it's genesis three fifteen. we just a seed of a woman we, that's what it is it's it's no more no less abraham he looked for the seed out of your loins that seed will come. but it progressively unfolds more and more about who this man would be that would come and redeem god's creation and the devil's just there pounding away all the time against God's will. And he does the same thing today with the Christian church. You finally get to the body of Christ, and he's just, this is the great mystery, the secret that God hid, the true fellowship that Christ wouldn't be alone. He was going to have many brothers and sisters who was going to come back and help restore not only Israel, because Jesus Christ will be King of kings and Lord of lords, He will sit on his father's throne, but all the nations of the world, that's part, we're we're part of that plan where we're going to come back with him to help with the rest of the nations because the original sons of God sucked. They blew it. They (laughs) they didn't do a very good job of leading the nations to Israel. Well, that's the thousand year period of time. That's a lot of what we'll be doing. So anyways, it's, 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 it's beautiful knowing looking at the you know this this constant consistent faithfulness of our father just continuously pounding away no matter what the situation throws in front of him he just keeps pounding away to get to that goal so i i I don't know i'm sorry well who's going to listen to that stuff michael Yep. <coughs> yep. Well, I think it's amazing how they kept records of their generations. You know, 2,172, you know, somebody had, a, you know, their sons. Uh, that's quite amazing, you know. And then as I was thinking about that, I thought, well, God knows every hair that we have on our head and how many we lose every day. So I shouldn't be amazed, but I am still by, you know, just the accuracy of the word and how they kept record of 
how many people were in a person's generation. That's that, to me. That's that's, that's really amazing. Well, think about how easy it is for God with Don Culkin, as far as counting the hairs. Remember? I, I did look at my brother Don, <laughs> but but he actually he probably has to shave it. So the, he's got little hair particles in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's probably got more up underneath his nose than he does on top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> the counting is easier that way, right? right. Well, not everybody can pull off a, a shaved head, but you definitely can. Well, I guess to answer my question, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's like the word you can't understand it i mean how it works so it's just speaking the word is what matters and uh because you know it just to me it's like i, I don't know what i'm trying to say but reveal the things that we need to know and as we learn and we grow, he always gives us something else to think about or shows us something else. So I think that's kind of where you were coming from, John. Yeah, you're right, Don, Dana. Uh, that's the beauty. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just frustrating because the uh, sin looks so enticing and so much better than uh, what God's words truth is you know but the truth of the word is that the wages of sin is death but that just doesn't you know somebody hears that and they go oh malarkey i don't want to you know that's uh so but well that's because he's got a an excellent way of covering things up to make them look so good And God well, exposed yeah, right. Oh. might take a lot of men and a lot of generations to find that believing person, but when it happens, you know, God's will hey. happen, period. I mean, I could see why the angels in heaven rejoice over that because uh Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean definitely. Uh because uh, it's like you know, there's gonna be a lot of people going to be kicked, pushed, or they'll just have to walk into the lake of fire. And I don't want to see any of that happen. But, uh, you know, you think about the millennial time, the little bit that I know about when we'll be here, they'll still be people that will still, it's just terrible that what happened in the Garden of Eden. And, and uh, but it's so nice to be with God and be able to fellowship with him and, and there, and, and I just, you know, what's it say about where their minds are blinded by, uh, anyway, the darkness is just, uh, that's when we get humble and thankful that God looks upon the heart of man. Well, that's right. Good. Yeah. Hey, that's great. I'm there with you. Uh, 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 I mean. Because we have, we've been blessed to see God in his goodness and his son reveal to us that uh, we're like God. You know, not like God. That's a, that's a terrible thing to say. But we want every man to come to a knowledge just like God does. Well, I mean, I don't think, I hear what you're saying that, yeah, I mean, we're like God. I mean, we're not God. I mean, we want to be imitators of God. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's right. We want people to come just like, just like God does to a knowledge of his truth. Yes. And... Uh, So yeah, <laughs> you know, God got it's a, a long 
time for a lot of evil, evil things because they didn't know about the adversary. And that's yeah. what was exposed so that you had a choice from our freedom of will that God gave us to choose the good or the evil. You know, one of the things we tend to forget is that the devil comes pre presenting himself as an angel of light. And in, I, I, there was a verse I saw yesterday that said, the devil is beautiful. Yeah. It was so, you know, if people are only going by looks, they'll go to the devil every time. If you don't know the word, you can, you have almost no way to defend yourself. Because you're going to go to the devil because it all looks so good. It looks good. It feels good. It tastes good. And that's why God taught us about vanity. So that we could discern. That's right. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a humbling privilege to be able to try to do it anyway. Yes, sir. And you ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that is in you? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. So the, the bigger, the broader scope, as our scope of Scripture grows more and more, what's supposed to be the result of that is that <laughs> it's supposed to get bigger and bigger because... That's what energizes us. The what the not what is, but the but the fact of what will be, and we man as we manifest that believing is the substance of what things prayed for. Yeah. So the as I as I as I visualize what God is doing in Christ more and more from the scope of the Word and what He has had to go through and just how contentious and evil evil really is then uh the energy it's supposed to energize us it's supposed to what is it uh name of that book the christian hope the anchor to the soul <laughs> it's supposed to be what we anchor ourselves in and we manifest that the temple was a manifestation a reflection of heaven to the degree that men and women would come together and do the will of God. He wanted to show himself. The garden was a reflection of God's love and what he wanted for his man. We, as Christians, are supposed to be a reflection of God's love and what he wants for man. And the bigger, the bigger we see the hope and the more scope we have, that will radiate to people. That, that, that's why it says... Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That's because we see what will not only what is and what was, but what will be. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and that light that lights your face up. That lights your it's like a pregnant girl. You ever seen the face <laughs> of a pregnant woman? She's she's yeah. Yeah, she's all lit up and she's got that glow about her. That's because there's life generating within her. Mm -hmm. That's the way the Christian's supposed to be. And it's that hope that gives that light. It's that hope that gives that spark. We're supposed to, anyways. If we see it for what it is. If we, if we see it as playing harps with Jesus for, for forever, that's a kind of a limited, how much glow can you get out of that, right? But if you see it as... The, the, the conquest of evil and bringing in an everlasting kingdom where God comes back to the planet to walk with his man. And uh, during the thousand year, God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, actually fulfilling all the promises that God made to people throughout time. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty, pretty awesome. And, and our, and we have a part in that. We have, we, we, and, and now we're <clears throat> we're supposed to be lights to the nations, lights to the world to say, hey, come on the train, get on board. The mystery train, that's where the ages are rules. Get on that train. <laughs> I 
I have a new outlook for people that condemn Christians that believe in the rapture, or the, or as I like to call it more, the gathering together of the church. But the uh, they call a lot of them tease Christians and try to put them down because they see the the ones the Christians that see that separation and that pre pre trib rapture. Everybody else what says you're just trying to escape the the wrath to come and and it yes <laughs> I I am Peter said Peter in his original service uh, sermon said get away from this crooked and perverse nation and accept the redemption God has made available. Every administration has had salvation yeah, yeah. in one way, shape, form, or another presented to it. And uh, huh. I, not my fault God had a secret, and his secret was a body of, of, of beings that would come together with Jesus Christ in such a united way and purpose that it would make his return <laughs> to planet Earth totally un uh, imaginable, unimaginable, but yeah. un oppose nobody can nobody's going to be able to oppose the force that God's sending back to this planet and His judgment. And yeah, so, Jesus Christ so is right. coming back. He ain't coming back as a carpenter's son and. Uh, in a in a mortal body that's going to be able to be hung up on a tree and murdered, he's coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's got a lot of folk coming with him. Got a lot of folk coming with him, and God is going to restore the promise to Abraham. What was the promise of Abraham through your seed? All the nations of the earth will be blessed. That seed wasn't talking at that time about a seed of many. It was talking about the seed of one, which is Christ. That's what Galatians teaches us. But what we find out from the secret is, huh, there's a whole bunch of them people with seed <laughs> coming back. And, and, we, yeah. and the yeah. nations of the world will be blessed through that seed of Christ, of which we will play a major part. And to be able to watch that, wow. Watch it, heck, do it. Yeah. yeah. There'll be some serious butt kicking going on, yeah. too. There'll be some serious butt kicking going on. I want a flame, uh, I want a flamethrower and a battering ram. That's what I want. I'm going to ride that horse with blood in my thighs. <laughs> Evil. Well, you know, I think about there's a lot of people that are, are saved and, you know, born again. They just don't have what we know as the sacred secret. And they're going to have to be educated at some point in time at the gathering together somewhere along the line. I mean, we all will because we'll have to be trained in different ways to when we come back after three and a half years or whatever is going to happen. But, uh yeah, you're right. I mean, even if they don't have an accurate knowledge of truth, at least they're going to be there and be able to be educated or brought to a place in the Lord's army to come back and straighten up a whole lot of crap here. Jesus Christ is commended for his hatred of evil. He, just like his father, he hates evil because of the the, the the terrible things it does to people. It's it's evil is is if we could see evil for what it is. What was that movie with all those kids? From that evil rock, evil was, was evil is evil is horrendous. It's and Jesus Christ walked the face of the earth and he saw. You know, and his compassion was great. Why he said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do, because he knew we were stupid and ignorant and needed a lot, a lot of help. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like what John was saying. I mean, the uh, angel of darkness is beautiful, but is the the evil that is lurks behind this mask is just terrible. Yep. Yes. 
but we, I mean, I'm sure that we've all run into people in our lives that their outward beauty was uh, something to look upon, but as we got to know them more, they, some of them just weren't quite so pretty anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The old crush I ever had, right? <laughs> Yeah, we're not supposed to be ignorant of the wiles of the adversary and uh, his wiles and his methods are simply uh, uh, lies, deception, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what's the other word I was looking for? Uh, counterfeit, <laughs> something nearly or very nearly like the genuine, but not the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. That's that's a huge thing, Don. That's cool. It wasn't just evil. It was that that it's it looks good. It's got good. It's got good attributes to it, but it's. The heart of it is evil, good and evil. The knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Run away. Run away. Run away. <laughs> well, his end result, I mean, his if he had a, what do you call it, uh, a mission statement, it would be that he wants as many in the lake of fire as he can because he's here to steal the word, kill you any way he can. And then it will be just, and then you'll be destroyed in the lake of fire with him. Absolutely. Take as many down as you can. That's a good point. If I'm going down, I mean, if I'm going down, all y'all are going down with me. <laughs> so that's why we're supposed to stand, you know, and and although we may not understand the words we speak of life or light it still does something in the realm of possibilities. All I can see is it ain't going to be us. <laughs> yeah, we're not, on the, we're not on the burning end of that stick. Yeah, we're on group one. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Those people... And that we read about the day they were amazing when their in their visions they were so amazing some of the things they accomplished what's that uh, the believers Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11 mm. somebody's phone ringing I got an alert. It's going to rain here in a little bit. Oh, okay. That's all. Well, this worse things, you know. <laughs> My little weather app. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, truthfully, I remember years where we were at, uh, in um, at the Rock of Ages and they needed rain. Mm -hmm. I can remember getting my butt wet at the Rock of Ages because we got rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sleeping in the middle of the night in a tent, and all of a sudden, boom! You woke up and you felt like you peed your pants. <laughs> then the next year, I put duck's ass on my tent. At... Uh -huh. Yep. Oh, you got to seal these things. I see. Okay. Yeah, I remember years where it rained and rained and rained and just didn't stop. Until we sat on the ground singing, I shall not be moved. <laughs> yep. Okay, folks, it's about quarter, it's going on quarter after 10. Do you want to continue on or do you want to call it a night? Night, night. Yeah. I'm going to go to bed. Okay. So, mm -hmm. we'll see you later. Good night. Oops. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for coming, guys.
Good night. Good bless you all. Good night.